Welcome to Fort Fritz, your one stop for news, current events, and all forms of entertainment relating to the paranormal, the supernatural, the Fort TN, and things that go bump in the night, all packaged and presented in the form of Know Nothing Know It Alls, entertaining the unknown. Hello, I am Fritz, your host, and for the next hour, we will present to you the spookiest, the scariest, the downright most frightening content you will hear. So, buckle up and let's get right into our first story. Have you heard of the Centralia Massacre? No piano frill, not my story, it's man daddy's. So we will start there. Why don't you just download that iHeartRadio app and search Fort Fritz and Fort Fritz Campfire Tales. Enjoy. Uh, uh, yeah, have you ever no. heard of the Centralia Massacre? Mm, no. Oh, Guys, the these are real guns. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. They're cocking them too. What is this? What is oh this? Oh my god! Oh my god! This is bad Guys, because what is going on here? A possible massacre. Angelo, hold me. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to be doing these bad things. Keep the facade of the parade. Don't gotta, buckle. I, I can't. I can't do this with both You're of us. You're way man. too strong. Oh my Jesus. god. With the guns are laughing. The guys with the guns are now laughing. Oh, good. That's not bad. That's not a good. I don't know. Are they that, that evil? Like no, don't say kill me. They've got guns. Let's just chuckle. All right, like, I'm going to soothe Fritz with a story now. Oh, thank I'm you. going to. I'm going to take his fears away with a little tale of the Centralia massacre. And as massacres go, this, I mean, nowadays with our high high body counts, this one is a lower a, one of your lower body count massacres. Oh, good. Yeah, so at least that. another positive. Yeah, at least uh, yeah. silver lining. You're looking on every massacre. That's it. So let's check this out. Armistice Day is the day to celebrate the end of World War One, a day of parades and celebrations across the USA. What is usually not included in these celebrations are multiple deaths, a hanging. And possible castration. Jeez, no. whoa. Well, that's what happened on Armistice Day, November 11th, 1919, in Centralia, Washington. In America, it was turbulent times. Because when isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? When years? There was like, yeah. there was like a week, I think. There was a week Clinton, when everything was sweet. I you know? never saw like probably like the, the chillest time, right? Like, so, Obama was kind of, it, was, it wasn't bad. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't bad. Uh, 1919 was the year the first anniversary of it so that's why it was named armistice day yeah is that a french term probably armistice, yeah, armistice. It, it was signed in the the hall what got the mirrors now after the, after the successful bolshevik re revolution in russia the fear of communism was spreading across the u.s Oof. at the time the industrial workers of the world or the iww aka the wobbles or the wobblies. It the looks wobblies. like it looked like it'd be wobblies or wobbles. I've seen, I've I've seen, seen it both. both. Yeah, I've yeah. seen both wobblies and wobbles. It's probably like the colloquial term. You know, you're actually the wobbles, but the boys are like, you know, you go see see the rest of the wobblies tonight. Like, <laughs> yeah. go hang it's out. Like, okay, talk, we talk call some wobblies. Yeah. You can't you call us don't, wobblies. Don't I want to hear We're saying. wobbles yeah, to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. What's up, guys? You jiggling tonight? You just hear a bar stool. A guy just stares. <laughs> What you say to me? <laughs> a so, record scratch. <laughs> did the IWW come about because of the Bolshevik Revolution directly? Like with the workers of the world unite, you have nothing to lose. They were shackles. They weren't, they weren't related. It's okay. just the fact that they called themselves, you know, the uh, International Workers of the World, and also the fact that uh, they, they were like one union, one people, like type of thing. So of course they're going to be combined with. Oh, then you're communist. Yeah. I will say that whole workers of the world propaganda movement was one of the most just beautifully right? done social movement. You have nothing to lose but your shackles. Yeah. That's everything. Everyone can, can get behind you that. You can see so many things today in parallel when it comes to the use of propaganda. Mm -hmm. Facebook and memes, Fox News is the new propaganda. Yeah. You know, and it, it's just, there's so many things where it's just, the, if you say the lie now, it doesn't matter because the lie is out there and someone else can click on it and they're just going to click on the lie. They're not going to click on the proof or the uh, anything behind the it, they're just going to click on the meme, and th the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> just ask me how they get you. No raisins, though. No raisins in your pudding. Don't. No raisins. And not in even pudding. in rice pudding. Those are just little speed bumps in your pudding. So at the time, the industrial workers of the world, the IWW, the Wobbles, were feared to be an arm of the communist revolution. In fact, the year before, a nearby IWW hall was looted. And the Wobbles were hauled outside of the town and told to leave and never come back. So this is last year. 
So now the, the current wobbles town. are like a little nervous, a little on edge. Yeah. And so because of this, local IWW members were prepared for the worst in 1919. Oh my God, what did they do? Click, clack. They had members staked out at strategic locations around the hall and around the parade area. Fear mongering. As the new parade was going to be coming through. The parade approached. And it contained, and I love this is a little list I found on one article. I just love this list. It contained Centralia veterans, Elks Club members, Boy Scouts, nurses, Red Cross workers, the Salvation Army, local citizens, and the Elks Club band. Oh, okay. Basically, the worst of the worst. <laughs> the most horrible people you can find. Centralia's <laughs> nurses, Red Cross workers, and shit. Just horrible people. The group of veterans stopped marching in front of the IWW Hall. What happened next is up to a lot of talk and a lot of dispute going on. Because either the ruthless commie IWW fired first, killing two veterans, or the brave, God-fearing men in the parade charged the hall and attempt to loot and attack it as before. Here are the facts. Three veterans were shot on Tower Avenue as the uh, parade passed the hall. Another veteran, uh, uh, another veteran from the parade was shot dead by Wesley Everest when he was cornered by the Shakumachuk. I love that. Shakumachuk River. Sakumachuk. Sakumachuk. Say it with me. Sakumachuk. <laughs> so glad that worked. I'm so f- you have no idea. I'm being with bands and stuff, there's certain times you look back and go, just the bass. And then and, and sometimes just the bass won't happen. But when it does, it's cool. <laughs> the vet pointed um, at the Sukumachuk River. Wesley Everest is cornered. And the veteran pointed a jammed pistol at Wesley and ordered him to surrender. He knew he had a wrecked gun, yeah. but he was still trying to show up and show and prove. And then Wesley unloaded his pistol, killing the vet. Oh. Just slaughtered him. So later, Wesley was overpowered by the rest of the vets and was paraded back to town with a belt around his neck. The mob was told that he was, in fact, Britt Smith, the leader of the local IWW. He wasn't, oh. but they believed him. Fake news. <laughs> now, with, once fire. you get the narrative out there. That's yeah. it. Yeah, once it's out there, you can't stop it. Victor's right history. What is it, the... Uh, um, a lie goes around the world by the time the truth is put on its pants. Nice. Yeah. Mm. So when they mm. got to the jail, mm. a rope was tied around his neck, mm. was thrown over a light pole, mm. and his feet began to leave the ground. But the parade marshal talked the crowd down, and he was put in a jail cell. All right, parade marshal. Nice. Way to go. Way to manage the parade. Way to go. Even yeah. when it gets That's unruly. Like, right. Like, boys, boys. Step in. I get the I get the gesture. Everybody's blood's a little up. This is all fun he, and games. He's clearly scared. Let's put him in the jail cell. Like, put him down. Yeah. Holy are shit. we are we animals? And the answer is we're yeah. A parade. yeah. The answer is yes because he wasn't in that cell for that long. Oh. Yeah, they began rounding up all the members of the local IWW, oh. and then they raided their hall. They brought all of the furniture out into the street and set it on fire. Okay. So well, disrespectful. I know. You can still, it's just a chair. It's you a could still dramatic. use those. Yeah. yeah. So many asses could have been in that chair, but now. That's so disrespectful. No ass. Yes. Waste. Wasteful. You could donate that and write it off in your tag. I'm sure there's a bunch Thank of you. poor ass Centralians like, dude. So they, uh, they started, they burned Shackles. all, they burned everything in the street. Ugh. And so about a hundred men assembled at the local Elks Lodge and made their way to the jail. What is the Elks Lodge? It's just it's just kind of those. It's where t- old men hang out. And yeah, the, old dudes get together. Reminisce and make sure about that what young dudes and women can't go there. Can't do what they can't okay. Hold hands okay. 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 Just, just like the, the 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 loyal order of the water buffaloes from uh, the Flintstones. It's just that's what I was thinking. Or the what's a moose lodge then? Or a moose lodge? Moose yeah, lodge. that's the same okay. thing, right? I see. Yeah. Just All old right. men get together just... and like kind of get upset about how it's not like it used to be. Pop yeah. off. So anyway, about a hundred men <laughs> were assembled at this Elks Lodge and they made their way to the jail. When they got there, someone cut the power to the block. What? Yeah. Cold and, and, they, and they killed all the lights on their cars, too. So they just went all in it, all ninja style. Damn. So in the darkness, they broke down the door, stormed the jail, and dragged Wesley out of his cell. What? Oh, yeah. Then they drove him to the Chihalis River. A rope was tied around, a crossbeam, and then his neck. He was pushed off the bridge. Oh. And then around 20 shots were also fired at his Almighty. Body. 
And this was like not even the right guy, right? Someone well, said I, he was the guy. So and he he did. Someone did see him shoot the guy that had the gun pointed at him. But they said he was but, a member they, of but the they union. Said he was, they said he was the leader. Leader. Yeah. Was, and he was not the leader Banner at all. Or whatever. And so some witnesses even say that he was castrated before he was hung. That's the oh. possible castration. I was going to say, I feel like castration is either definitely happening or not. So it's, Usually it's, it's either on the menu or off. You know, what are we doing here? Right. We're, not, we're not hedging on this one. Oh. <laughs> That's terrifying. But the local coroner... You just hurt Angela. She, w- she whinged. I like, yeah. That's she not whinged snar. Snar. She's That's like, God, snar. That's whinge. <laughs> Please keep... Telling your story. The local coroner, however, said he was not castrated. Okay. As the local coroner said, he was not castrated. However, you should know that no one would take the body, and it swung there for two days. Then they took the body down, and it laid in the jail cell for another two days. Oh, by the way. The local corner also is one of the leaders of the parade. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it was reported that he was the dude who performed the castration. What? Yeah, so the local corner said, oh, that never happened. Everybody's like, dude, you're the one who did it. <laughs> so, Ain't weird. nobody castrated, nobody does. Yeah, so, and I see nothing. So there may be wobbles, but they weren't wobbling that much that day. Oh, <laughs> come on. No, you know, I think enough time, let's, I think enough time has passed. Obviously, Man Daddy hates the working class. That's Man Daddy at FortFords.com. Jesus. Oh, my God. I just thought that. My favorite. Oh, God. <laughs> you no. didn't even write that down. That, that was off the dome. That was off the dome. That was off the dome. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. That was, that was not right there. Son of a bitch, it was off the dome. Uh, uh, it's just how off evil. Off the dome. That's just how evil he is. Ah, okay. In the aftermath, many wobbles were arrested and seven were convicted of second degree murder. So, in the end, we don't know if it was a communist uprising attacking good faith Americans. Or it was heartless capitalists attacking innocent workers, fighting for a decent wage. Yes. All we can hope is to learn from the mistakes and this tragedy. But something tells me we won't. You know what? Are we- you are listening to Fort Fritz on Real Radio 104.1. Fort Fritz on Real Radio 104.1. Welcome back to Fort Fritz. Fritz here. This next story, presented by Angela, our revenant roommate here at Fort Fritz. This is about a cursed painting, the cursed painting, The Crying Boy, by Italian painter Giovanni Bragolin. And what exactly made it so dang cursed? There's only one way to find out. Let's take a listen. Enjoy. But, but, but I really mean, like, what is this last piece you were trying to sell? Do you know anything about this? Yeah, The Three Handsome Brothers Next Door by Marshall Lee Stanzo. No, 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 no. Even though that's a good one. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you mean The Crying Boy? Yes, but The Curse of The Crying Boy. No way. Curse? What? I didn't know that. We could charge more money for it. Is that why he's crying? (laughs) He's cursed. Because the painting is cursed. Yeah, he's like, ah. It checks out. It really does. Chucks. Bruno Armadio, popularly known as Bragolin, also known as Angelo Bragolin and Giovanni Bragolin, was the creator of the group of paintings completed in the 1950s known as The Crying Boy. The paintings feature a variety of tearful children looking sadly straight ahead. That's, that's kind of messed up. It is a little messed it's a up. It's little disturbing. It's like the original uh, Sarah McLaughlin sad, like, uh, pet commercial. The ASPCA. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The children were usually depicted as poor, so sometimes these paintings were called the Gypsy Boys, <clears throat> mm-hmm. although there is nothing specifically linking them to, to the Romani people. So, not really actually linking them to, like, what you would consider, like, Gypsy kids, but that's what people call them. You mean little little thieves? Yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <man. laughs> Bragolin was an academically trained painter, working in post-World War II in Venice as a painter and restorer, producing the crying boy pictures for tourists. At least 65 such paintings were made under the name Bragolin, reproductions of which were sold worldwide. Was this um, a horizontal like picture or was it it was a portrait okay it's very close up on the face isn't it 
Yes. Yeah, I'm just laughing to myself thinking that as an artist in the 50s, you could just walk around Italy and, be like, and like smack children and be like, hey, I'll shut up at you. And like the kid starts crying. You're like, I'm an artist. It's okay. I'm going to need to study. I need to study. I need to see my work. Poke him in the face. He's poke okay. him in the eye. Uh, He's in the, uh, a bread and some cheese. Huh? I'm an artist. <laughs> He's a piece of pepperoni. I like that he thought that these were the type of paintings that would sell to tourists. <laughs> <laughs> That's people, crazy, too. But people were obsessed with them. <laughs> So at least 65 of them were like originals, but about 50,000 copies were sold in the UK. That's crazy. <laughs> in UK specifically too. That's awesome. Yes. British people were just like, yeah. Yeah, crying, crying children. Gypsy well, all the yeah. like <laughs> posters of the Beatles and crying children. Because the British are so crying repressed. Poor children. They're so emotionally repressed. They just needed some like crying child. It just gives you that moment in the yeah. ride for yes. me painting. Cry you just look at me. it and you're just like. You have your team. There is sadness in the world. Yeah. Back to work, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's just a long silence of them staring at the painting and then quiet. Yeah. <laughs> it's like an emotional portrait of Dorian Gray. If the painting <laughs> st stays sad for you. <laughs> uh, so why, why was this painting so beloved? People don't understand why they loved it so much. It was just so real and all the kids were beautiful. Mm. So he just painted these beautiful children just crying and they loved it and everyone had these in their houses <laughs> especially in the UK just beautiful poor Italian children <laughs> crying their eyes out <laughs> you could end the story there and still be creepy as <laughs> that, is, that is really weird. It's so strange. There is a strange thing going on there. I feel like there's a, yeah. Mass hysteria thing or something. Weird. In Venice specifically, I don't know. <laughs> wow. Yeah, people have problems. That's insane. I like what I like. I like what I like. <laughs> Sad children. <laughs> I guess you can always threaten your kids like, do you want to be that kid? <laughs> Do you want to be that sad, beautiful child on the wall? Look at how dirty his face is. Yes, he's poor. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the painter passed away, so... Um, Bragonin passed away in 1981. However, four years later after his death, in September of 1985, the British tabloid newspaper The Sun printed an article called Blazing Curse of the Crying Boy. A story about May and Ron, and Ron Hall, whose home was destroyed by fire. The cause of the fire was a chip pan that overheated and burst into flames, spread rapidly, and destroyed the whole ground floor of their home. The only item that remained intact and barely burnt was a print of the crying boy on the living room wall. The upset couple claimed that the painting was cursed. Damn. Really? I want a chip pan. I want a pan just for chips. Sounds like it catches on fire a lot. Yeah, but if you get fresh chips, you gotta balance that <laughs> out. <laughs> you just sit there and watch your house burn, just yeah. eating you them like, well, chips? You had really fresh it chips. It was worth it. Yeah. I feel like May and Daddy missed the key element of that story. <laughs> but May and Ron Hall were not the only victims. The Sun also reported that an Essex firefighter claimed that undamaged copies of the painting were frequently found amidst the ruins of burned houses. He claimed that at least 15 house fires Whoa. where everything was destroyed except a painting or print of the of the crying boy. Really? So it survived all of the fires? Yes. Oh, at least 15. No. At least 15. That's a pretty high number. Substantial amount. Could you imagine being a firefighter and like... Every time... And like, every time you're like, ah! Oh, right, exactly. The they're like, dude, if that painting is in here again i'm freaking out you man like you just see them like passing money back and like taking yeah. bets and odds on, on <laughs> who gets it mm -hmm. yeah who finds the crying boy to describe a few in detail so these are like examples of some of the houses that the firefighter helped a lady in surrey lost her house to fire six months after buying the painting mm. two sisters in kilburn had fires in their homes after buying a copy of the painting one sister even claimed to have seen her painting sway backwards and forwards on the wall. A concerned lady on the Isle of Wight attempted to, uh, to burn her painting without success. What? And then went on to suffer a, ru a run of bad luck. I don't know why she wanted to burn it. This thing creeps me out. I just want to burn this baby's yeah. face. I really hate this <laughs> painting. A gentleman in Nottingham lost his home and his family were injured. He had the painting. And a pizza parlor in Norfolk was destroyed, including every painting on its wall, except for one being the crying boy. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. 
Eventually, if there was an image of a crying child by any artist in a house that went on fire, the painting was blamed. Some claimed that they experienced bad luck if they attempted to destroy or get rid of their paintings. Others were convinced that it was only a matter of time before disaster struck them. Why didn't they just get rid of the paintings? The lure is already out there. Yeah. No one wants your paintings. And, and then you can't <laughs> destroy your painting because if there's any kind of bad juju, mm, then it yeah, just gets released. So yeah. on the side of the road and then it follows you home. After printing more articles and scare stories, The Sun, which is the first tabloid that released the stories about this painting, offered the public a solution. On Halloween in 1985... Spooky. Hundreds of the paintings were collected together by the newspaper, so people were actually sending these oh, newspapers. Really? Wow. Sending their, their prints to the newspaper and burnt under the supervision of the fire brigade. Whoa. Uh, they just, just happened to randomly pick Halloween. You know, just, oh, uh, I'll just happen to pick this day. This seems like, oh, it just happens to be Halloween. Okay, 1985, good, good. you said. Yep. Yeah. And the painter died in 1981. That's pretty metal. It is. It's pretty metal. 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 <laughs> so, right metal. Right, quite right. So why was this seemingly innocent series of painting curse just little kids crying? Theories range from the little boy being a gypsy child whose family placed a curse on the artist. Some claimed that the child had died in a fire and his spear was trapped in the painting. The, or the child's parents had also been killed in a blaze. Mm. Wherever the little orphan went, fires mysteriously followed, earning him the nickname Diablo or the Devil. The boy supposedly survived to early adulthood, who this painting was modeled after but was tragically killed when his car crashed and burst into flames. Ooh. From then on was his image that carried on his cursed fascination with fire into the afterlife. Oh, so maybe like that was his avatar. Mm -hmm. oh. So I'm just saying that we need to be careful with the crying boy. Yeah, the crying boy. Trying to get rid of. What did you do with those hors d'oeuvres? <clears throat> you were listening to Fort Fritz on Real Radio 104.1. Support Fritz on Real Radio 104.1. Welcome back to Fort Fritz. Kaz has our next story. Kaz recounts and reanalyzes the very last night of Sam Cooke's life. Sam Cooke was a rising star in the early 60s, but the last night of his life was extremely messed up uh, on many levels, and we're going to break it down. Exactly what kind of character Sam Cooke was and why it ended up that way. You are listening to Fort Fritz on Real Radio 104.1. Actually, I mean, hmm. do you guys know about how Sam Cooke died? No, how'd he die? Old and happy? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh -oh. Sam Cooke, um, Sam Cooke died on December 10th, 1964. Um... It might have actually been December 11th in the in the wee hours of the morning. How old um, was he? Going to wee? He was 33 he was only, when he, he was only died. 33. Sa he already had a pretty established uh, recording career at this point. This is 64, and and he's this is a famous man. Oh, right? yeah, Sam Cooke is famous. This is a guy. He's he's at, you know, he's in L.A. He's in the the happening spots. He's wearing the the really flashy suits. Everyone knows who this guy is. Right? Yeah, he's hanging out with like a Muhammad Ali and Lou Rawls King all the Cole time. Nat King stuff. Cole, yeah, like, yeah. This is like, he's, this is a famous dude. He's a, he's a celebrity. Um, so they're having, uh, he and uh, one of his producers, the producer's wife are all having dinner at a restaurant and this is just this, you know, very publicized celebrity sort of event. Like everyone's coming over to say hi, how's it going? There's other celebrities and everyone knows Sam Cooke was at the restaurant. Okay. Uh, and on this night, he... Uh, catches the eye, or maybe uh, she caught his eye, but there was a young woman at the bar mm -hmm. uh, went by the name of Eliza Boyer. Okay. Uh, she was a 22-year-old um, Asian woman, and they hit it off, and they decided that uh, several people saw them leave together. They were going to uh, go to another place and, and get some drinks. So they went to two other places around uh, downtown Hollywood. And uh, the end of the night, Sam is driving this woman to a hotel. And he, uh, right about midnight, <clears throat> pulls into the hotel parking lot, and he g gets out of the car, leaves uh -huh. the woman in the car. She's there. He walks in to check in, 
he uh, is told that he has to check it. He checks in initially under his his full normal name, Sam Cook. Right. Uh, is told by the clerk that in order to bring this woman in, because it's the 60s, he has they have to check in as Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Sam Cook. Okay. So uh, he he registers. The woman's in the car. He gets back in the car. They go to their hotel. Uh, a few hours later, uh, she is seen screaming, running, running. Uh, mostly naked from the hotel room uh, clutching her clothes or cl- clutching a pile of clothes and um, Sam Cook is dead in the hotel lobby what Damn. in the lobby in the lobby uh, the the clerk of the hotel um, basically told police that she got into a scuffle uh-huh. with Mr. Cook he came into the lobby he was very irate he demanded to know where the woman was and uh, he then got into a tussle with the hotel clerk who happened to be armed. She had a pistol and she shot him uh, twice and one of them actually piercing his lung and his last words being, lady, you shot me, which are some famous, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard the, the, the famous last words, lady, you shot me, but that was Sam Cooke. Wow, I didn't know that. Um, lady, you shot me. Yeah. There's that like soul song, lady, you shot me. Keep no, so, okay, bring it. Come on, come on. Come on. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to hear I don't another verse. Like that. You're, come on. Bring it. I don't Bring it. it now, Kaz. Damn it. So he dies right so there. So he in dies the in the hotel lobby. room. That, wow. In the, in the hotel lobby. In the uh, lobby. In the lobby. Um, so the police show up, and the police instantly recognize who this is, a famous recording artist. This right. is not just some crazed guy who, uh, you know, tried to hold up a hotel lobby or something like was that. Was he fully clothed? Uh, no, he was naked. And Sam Cooke was really? in, his, in, his, in his underwear. All right. Um, Draws. It's a big drops. difference. Big difference. So <laughs> he... Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The police take the statement from Eliza Boyer. They take the statement from the hotel clerk, and they seem to match up. Eliza says he was drunk. He uh, it was clear that he was going to rape me. He he made me get undressed, and then he started to grope me, and I managed to get away. And she had his clothes as well, which is an interesting sort of twist that we'll get into. But huh. she didn't just escape with her own clothes. She says in in her panic, she grabbed a bunch of clothes and mm-hmm. ran out, and some of them were his as well. Um, the hotel clerk also sort of corroborated the story. She heard a scuffle. She saw the woman running, and then she had this inter- interaction with Sam Cooke where he attacked her, and then she shot him in self-defense. Uh, the interesting thing about this that sort of uh, started to cast some, uh, I guess, maybe dispersions on the, uh, the, the accounts of the hotel clerk and the woman is Eliza Boyer was arrested maybe a few weeks later for prostitution. She's a prostitute. Oh. And uh, not that that you know, not that you. Uh, I assumed she was a prostitute. Cor- corroborate her story, but yeah, this is uh, this is. It, it wasn't the way that she initially uh, put the story forth. According to her testimony, she was just a woman hanging out at a bar. She withheld a bunch of stuff. Correct. She the, the, it, she wasn't fully sort of forthcoming with the police about this. And um, in addition to that, the hotel clerk, uh, there was sort of signs that maybe her story was maybe not fabricated, but maybe embellished slightly. Um, she talked about how he slammed her. He was on top of her and there's not really, there were no really, uh, indications of that kind of scuffle. She didn't really have the injuries to support that kind of, uh, that, that, that kind of story. So, um, as the police started to investigate a little bit more, um, it almost looks like a setup. It looks like this man was about to be robbed and he, he got hip immediately realized he was being robbed, ran out to go chase his, Uh. his robber. And uh, maybe so the, the, the whole thing is that the, 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 the death is sort of shrouded in mystery, right? Like he was, yeah, no one course. knows what happened. He shot, he's dead. And then the cops show up and say, okay, what happened? And then these two people give their mm-hmm. statements. The story is he ran, he ran out aggressively pound, quote unquote, aggressively pounding on the window and the door demanding to be let into the hotel lobbies of the middle of the night uh-huh. or early morning. So was this a motel? So their correct. room was outside of the lobby. Yeah. Correct. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't. Yeah. This is a, he took her to a motel, right? right. This is as, as you nice, would. Nice. Nice. Uh, uh, deli- deli- no, no, difference good. between hotel and motel. Cause there is a difference. Yeah, there is a difference. There's there's a, yeah, definitely. Again, Eliza's testimony or her statement to police is kind of shady. She says the whole night she she knows she's in danger. Basically, she says he uh, abducted her from the first restaurant. Mm. She doesn't mention that they went to two other places afterwards to get drinks. Well, if he was out of his mind with alcohol and he was super drunk, he that that is dangerous. She probably felt like she was in danger if he's just cruising down the interstate in his car with her just kind of like as a as a passenger, then that's abduction. You know, it's like, what what else could it be besides 
just crazy. You what know? do you mean out of your mind with alcohol? What I've never heard of those terms. What the woman, uh, she 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 had some inconsistencies in her statement with right. the police. She didn't tell them about the other places that she and Sam went to that night, which were two other places. If she was, if she, uh, from my perspective, if this is a person who, and again, I've never been abducted, so I can't tell you uh-huh. for sure, but. If this is, you know, if you're being brought to multiple different locations in public, like it's probably a little, it's difficult to kind of conceal that you're like holding this person hostage by bringing them around to get like different drinks and things like that. Maybe, maybe that's not the case, but. What I find so fascinating is that Sam Cooke was a very popular, highly regarded musician back then, but he sounds like a monster if, if he really did kidnap this person and, and was completely out of his mind drunk driving around to different Right. You're touching on like the core sort of um, inconsistency is this is Sam Cooke, right? Like, uh, it, And again, this is, you know, you could get into an argument where maybe it's a power thing or whatever. But Sam Cooke isn't isn't going out. and He's a famous, you know, musician. And this is in a public place. He 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 picked up a woman who he thought was was going to be his companion for the night. And again, mm-hmm. Sam Cooke is like an I, wanna, I don't want to say notorious ladies, man, but he's a ladies man. He's a man about town. Like he's he's an R and B singer. He's an R and B singer. Yeah, I mean, he just basically right. They just make panties fly. Out exactly. Of, you just just drop fly. The, the the story of the clerk seeing the woman sitting in the passenger seat of the car after Sam Cooke got up, left the car, went in to go register. This woman sits there and waits to be brought to the hotel afterwards. She. Who, you know, at some point... She, like a well-behaved hostage. Right. At some point, she, she decides <laughs> that she's had enough. Which you know, nice. It's always pretty, nice when they know, just chill sure. out, you know? Right. You may get out of here alive, just... But, like, okay, so, yeah, if she was picked up as a friend of the night, right? Friend, <laughs> friend of the night. <laughs> friend of the night. <laughs> and, and she saw, maybe, oh, in yeah. his wallet, let's say he's like, here you go, here's this amount of money. Mm-hmm. So she's like, okay, and then maybe well, she saw that. That would also corroborate the whole robbing story. Well, again, How this is... How much money did she have on her? Sam Cook brought her to a motel right. in, uh, what is it, the Hacienda Motel, which is, they do hourly rates at this place. This oh, is not like a nice... Gotcha, right. Yeah, this right. is not like a nice place. $900 an hour. This is actually... What six, hotels are you going to? Like, Sam like, Cook damn. hotels. <laughs> what do they do to you there? <laughs> You come in, you walk out, you're a year younger. But I make sure to get a shrimp cocktail while I'm there. <laughs> Are you kidding? Room I'm getting all the shrimp. Yeah, they'll give you at least two. I'm going to eat it like a baling whale. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was it was 64 chuck, chuck. so mm-hmm. it was uh, $3, $3, dollars, $3 per hour wow. for the night. Well, that's but, good, right? Uh, they did find that... Um, Again, her her story was that she collected a bunch of clothes and ran out, but she also somehow managed to collect uh, Mr. Cook's uh, cr- cards and um, Oops. money clips. Right. Just by accident. It could have been an accident. Who so knows? the the sort of, uh, I guess, Occam's razor version of this is people think that this is, uh, she was a friend of the night. Mm-hmm. Friend of the night. Yeah. <laughs> friend of the night. <laughs> she was a friend of the night. IP. <laughs> IP. Third back. TM. <laughs> and incidentally, who Mandetti's band will be opening for in Tampa? Hopefully, Yay. Tampa. Hopefully, Tampa. Friend of the night. Of the maybe, night. Some, maybe something in DeBerry with Friend of the Night. <laughs> that sounds like more of a DeBerry gig. It's such a DeBerry gig. Uh, so it just, it just, it just says DeBerry. <laughs> totally hey, not DeBerry, uh, DeBerry listeners, nothing against you guys. We love you. Like, you want to call in. Well, we haven't seen stats yet for DeBerry, so <laughs> if you're a DeBerry, call us at 570-478-3789. There's nothing funny about DeBerry. There is nothing funny about DeBerry. It's a very serious town. It's a lot of people. good work. All right, guys, now we're getting texts mm-hmm. in from the texting service. A lot of DeBerry fans. Oh, Represent. Right. Represent. Hey, represent. So, yeah, it's, uh, to me, it, it, was, it was a very uh, confusing, sort of convoluted thing. Obviously, some some sh- shady stuff went down that night, right? Like we got uh, Sam Cook picking up an Asian hooker, and then he is shot in a hotel lobby in like a seedy motel uh, downtown. I have a feeling LA. that's happened. To, that those two things. That's not the first time do- those two things. Have yeah, happened. maybe that's it's just the most high yeah. hooker, Asian or otherwise, shot in hotel. You have no proof of that. What a sad though, and ultimately disappointing way for Sam Cook's chapter to end. Absolutely, I mean, and. What a sad final chapter. Right. I mean, in, the guy was, you know, extremely famous during his time, which is kind of unheard of for, you know, R&B singers. It's, you know, it's one of those 
you rediscover them later. Like he was enjoying his fame in the '60s, and, and it was a sad way to, for him to go, for sure. He had one story where uh, it was him and his brother, and they were on their way to the uh, record studio, and they passed this chain gang, and they actually stopped and asked, "Would it be okay if we bring these men something?" And the warden recognized him but didn't say anything, and goes, "I suppose these men might want that." They went to the nearest exit, got cigarettes and Coca Colas. Wow! And nice. they came back. Here's some poison. Yeah, they were like, "Would you mind? No. <laughs> <laughs> Would you mind if if these men stopped?" And the warden was like, "I don't think they would mind that at all, Mister Cook." Mm. And then he it was at he he spent like twenty minutes just just like here here you go everyone Shooting this shit with and the chain gang. Like, That's awesome. Talk to me. And like a couple months later, they came up with the idea of oh, look, that's for the, the sound of the, the man working, working on the chain, on the chain gang. No yeah. You are listening to Fort Fritz on Real Radio 104.1. Fort Fritz on Real Radio 104.1. Welcome back to Fort Fritz. Fritz here with you for the final story. And this one, oh, this one's kind of sweet. I know. It's from Nick Spry. And it's about a woman with a heart of gold during a very, very bad epidemic in her local community and what she did to comfort others. Guys, have you ever heard the legend of Silver Hills? No. 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 Oh, no. Oh, oh, no! Oh, no! Gracias. Yes. But no. No, I, actually, not actually. No. no. So the legend of Silver Hills uh, has to do with the mid-19th century. Uh, in America. So the California gold rush happened basically from 1848 to 1855, and America got gold fever. People would go seek their fortune out west, uh, get in a plot, digging for a vein of gold. Uh, this <laughs> spread... Gold! Uh, gold! <laughs> silver and gold. Uh, so this spread uh, all across the sort of northwestern areas, territories too, um, in particular Colorado. Uh, so there was a mining camp that's quickly turned into a mining community by the name of Buckskin Joe. The town was called Buckskin Joe? There were a lot of odd <laughs> names for mining camps in these days, uh, such as uh, um, Terry All or... Timmy the Mining Camp. Timmy the Mining Camp. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, the name is actually comes from the man who founded the town. His name was Joe Higginbottom, and he was a known hunter who would wear buckskins a lot and was colloquially called Buckskin Joe. Uh, yeah. The story goes that he was out shooting at a deer. Uh, he His aim was off. He tripped on a rock or something, shot down into the ground, and then hit a vein of gold and started digging, and people heard about it. So that's where they got the idea for the Beverly Hillbillies. Could have been. Yeah. 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 Uh, up from the ground came some bubbling cool Texas uh, 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 black gold. Texas tea. Yeah, yeah, so there it is. That's where it all came from. Hmm. Who ripped off who? I ask you that. History. <laughs> <laughs> Counterpoint. <laughs> History. This guy's good. This guy's really good. Stone cold. So this community is about maybe 10, 15 miles south of the city of Breckenridge in Colorado. Um, oh. The present-day Alma is very close to it. It also lies close to the South Park Basin. So the story goes, this, this community uh, quickly grew to the size of 2,000-odd people. Uh, very large. It had two theaters. It had four hotels. It had a school. It had a post office. It was a, a community, but it was uh, consisted of mostly single men who spent their days working their lots, uh, and they had a lot of money in their pockets and would like to cut loose. So there were multiple dance halls. Um, one day, out of nowhere, a stagecoach arrived from the Denver Stage Company. Uh, and this woman got off the stagecoach. Uh, everyone noted on it because it was a sunny day. Uh, she was wearing all black, including a wide-brimmed black hat with a long black veil across of it. Mm -hmm. Everyone's diary said, Boing! Yeah. <laughs> Hot witch in town. Today was a good day. Can't even explain it. Buckskin Joe's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Little Buckskin. So this woman appears out of nowhere. Everyone is taken with her. She's very mysterious. Uh, um, no one knows anything about her. Uh, they don't know if she's mourning. There's no, no rhyme or reason to her behavior. And she goes around the town, 
as a normal person would, but never revealing her face to anyone. So she's just like Lady Gaga into this like old timey kind of, like yeah. mountain town. There's like rumors building about this woman. Right. It would be more Sia. Sia. Yeah, with the hair. Is that, yeah. Uh, was she always facing backwards? Well, to this day, no one really uh, has documented her name, uh, but there has been so much corroboration uh, from the community that this woman did actually exist. Uh, so she mills about town for a few days. Uh, then she gets a job at the one of the, the larger local dance halls owned by Bill Buck, Bill Buck's dance hall. On uh, uh, the story goes that upon her unveiling, uh, Bill Buck himself got up upon the bar, takes out two revolvers and shoots two shots to silence the crowd inside his very busy, popular dance hall. Uh, he brings this woman up onto the bar. She is wearing her normal regalia and she removes it. With a flourish, and she is wearing a beautiful satin wine colored gown. Ooh. And everyone sees that this is a beauty, a true beauty. She is gorgeous, and everyone is immediately enamored with her. No one knows anything about her. She quickly becomes the favorite dancer. And, well, for a little bit of extra gold, uh, you could take one of the dancers upstairs. Now, what are you saying? Yeah, it's like to have, like, to play a party. Oh, okay. she was a prostitute. Like, she was a, she she was a, she was a friend of the night. Western slang. Prostitutes, ladies of the line. I'm not. I, I was not that far off. Right. I like it. So she quickly became the favorite attraction, and men from different counties and camps would come to see her. Uh, they would throw what they call pokes, which are basically little leather bags <laughs> of gold dust at her feet when she would dance. She. This is you know very valuable, and so she quickly gathered enough money to purchase a cabin on, just on the outskirts of town, far enough away that she was somewhat considered removed from the community. Yeah. You gotta get away. You gotta get away. Right. Yeah. Good for her. So she was a landowner. Mm -hmm. yeah. She was. Uh, uh, one of her admirers forged her solid silver heels for her dancing shoes. And this is where her nickname came from. Silver Heels. Oh. Time passes and in the year 1861, smallpox hits the mining community of Buckskin Joe. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Now, in modern day, uh, uh, smallpox is the only disease that has been uh, eradicated, considered extinct. Uh, this happened in 1979, 1980. <sighs> I was, damn it, I was going to say 1977. Would have been uh, close. You were close. You were close. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't like it. <laughs> Little science background on the disease itself. Uh, it is very, very contagious. It is one of uh, four major, uh, they are called uh, orthopox viruses uh, that are uh, contracted in human beings. And those are the variola virus. This is known as smallpox. Uh, there is cowpox. There is also monkeypox. And monkey then, pox. Yes, way scarier sounding. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Like it could come at you. <laughs> it gets around. It's limber. It could claw your face! <laughs> Watch out! And then throw poop at you. <laughs> <laughs> and vaccina is the last. Uh, three of these are zootic, uh, and, and that does not include variola, which is smallpox. Smallpox only exists in human beings. Does that mean okay? So zootic means it's passed species to species. Yes, it can be passed from animals to human beings, okay. and and vice versa. Uh, smallpox is extremely contagious, and it can be airborne. It can also be transferred uh, through touching objects that one has touched that has the, the disease, or through uh, contact with their skin. Or blankets. Their skin? Mm hmm Oh, this thing's just like, take me! Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a real monster. Um, you wanna die? So the, the gestation period of this disease is around 12 days, uh, and then say, at the start, it's going to resemble the flu. Influenza, you're gonna have a fever, you're gonna have body pains, typically in the back and kidneys. Uh, after a week, pustules will begin to form uh, on your body. Uh, so they'll start as small um, muscles and then they'll turn into pustules, but the pustules are not formed filled with pus. They are filled with dead debris. Oh, uh, yeah. Then Crick. after a longer yeah. period of time, uh, these become much more dense and hard, and then they eventually collapse and scab over and form horrible, horrible scarring. Uh, so it's, it covers the entire body, uh, the trunks, the, the face, the, the torso, uh, the, the uh, extremities. It's It's quite graphic. Think uh, mm. the Fantastic Four, the thing. Somebody kind of looks like that. It's freaking biblical. Right. Yeah. It's biblical. And it also claims a third of all the lies that it uh, infects. Wasn't FDR? Didn't FDR get it? No, that was the polio. polio. Yeah. Damn it. Jonas Salk, points. Side points. So uh, about a 30% more uh, fatality rate on, on this disease. But there is a vaccine, and it, like I said, it was eventually eradicated. 
So this disease infects the town of Buckskin Joe. It was brought in by two sheep herders from the south, and they brought it in. And Mother. within 24 hours, one of these sheep herders became quite ill and passed away. Uh, several days later, the second passed away, and then it spread like wildfire from there. People were scared. People were dying. Um, a lot of people fled to Denver and to uh, uh, other communities outside. Uh, and yet, Silver Heels stayed. And not only did she stay, uh, she used her money to help bring in medical help and assistance into oh, the town. Oh. And she would go from house to house, from hotel room to hotel room, bringing food, bringing medicine, nursing solo miners who had no family, who had no friends, people just all alone. She became regarded as sort of an angel of mercy in this town. Not everyone survived, but those that do uh, owe their lives mainly to her. Um, she was held in such high regard that uh, uh, people wanted to pay her, and she always refused. Um, eventually, the story goes that she was standing over the bed of a man, nursing him, and collapsed. This was towards the end of the infection. Uh, people started recovering, and those that were going to pass mostly had passed. Um, people started coming back to the community, and then she fell ill. She collapsed, and someone managed to take her back to her cabin that she had purchased. They say that the only person who had seen her from that point on was sort of this matriarch of the community that went by Aunt Martha, who went to her, stayed with her, helped her recover for a long period of time. And uh, the story is that one night she stood up and looked at herself in a mirror. She had become horribly disfigured after surviving this disease. Um, she asked Aunt Martha to help her dress and put on her finest gown and her best silver fillet her best uh, silver ribbon to hold her hair back. Which was how she was remembered yes. back then. And then she sat by the window and stared out of it and asked uh, if Aunt Martha would leave. And no one ever heard from her again. The community uh, missed her deeply. She had brought such joy to everyone. And so they went around and raised around $5,000. And this is in the mid-19th century. To give to her as a thank you present and to welcome her back into the town. She was never found. And years later, people would say, even after this town had been abandoned because the vein had gone dry, that they would see a woman in a long black veil standing over the graves of these men who had passed away from smallpox and would leave a single rose upon them. Oh, my God. That is oh, a beautiful story. Silver Heels. Thank you, Don't Silver Don't forget, your shot to pay your bills. $1,000 is upcoming. Just text in that keyword to 200-200 and then answer your phone within the next hour. Bungalow on the bus. Upcoming. You are listening to Fort Fritz on Real Radio 104.1. Until next time, pleasant dreams.